Hello and welcome to the Math Jedi lesson today. Yes, today we are taking a look at the unitary method. This is part one, or should I say, episode one. And perhaps in a follow-up sequel, Mr. Douglas will appear as opposed to being a Sith Lord and talk about the unitary method part two. But for part one today, we are looking at the part whole method. Yes, all right, Jedi, or should I say Padawans, Let's get to it. Here we go. So yes, a little bit of Darth Vader there, and um, as you know, I, I have an official YouTube name now. It is The Math Jedi, which really what that means for you is that you are all now the Padawans, which kind of makes sense. Hopefully you guys are learning something. Today we're looking at Unitary Method. Um, and for Unitary Method, I want to just kind of focus on... Uh, some words a little bit. So the very first part of it, why is it called a unitary method? It sounds kind of weird. Um, unit. So you're going to hear me say this a lot, is that I'll be saying draw the bars. So the bars are really important. So the bars represent basically kind of like a, um, a whole of something. But more importantly, you have to understand that if a bar or a piece of the bar are the same size, they have the same value. Okay, so that's really important that you get that idea. If something has the same size, it has the exact same value. And we're going to be using these bars to basically um, take a look at different kinds of problems in math. And it's really, really helpful. So for the unitary method, um, this is going to be split up into uh, part one and part two. And today we are going to be looking at the part of a whole. Okay, so part of a whole kind of method. And then what we're going to look at in part two, which you can find in some other videos, is the comparison model. So this is all unitary, but there's different versions of unitary. So hopefully uh, we'll figure out some stuff this way. All right, so let's get to it. So starting uh, right away, let's just imagine that there were uh, 12 stormtroopers. So there's 12 stormtroopers, and we'll say there are 15 um, Jedis, okay? Uh, they're all inside, uh, they're in a room. Cool. Um, so another room, and we just want to know um, how many are there all together? Now, I know you already know the answer. You're like, oh my gosh, this is so simple. Like, how many are there all together? Well, that's really easy, but I want to, I want to make a point of this. So, so there's different ways to draw this, isn't there? So we could say that here is um, 12. We could say this is 12. And then this is the pick of orange. This is 15. Now, what would you be able to say between the pieces that are 12 and 15? Well, you say that the 15 better be bigger. If you're doing this right, the 15 has to be a bigger piece. But I want to get used to the drawing things like this. So this is how we're going to add up um, bars all together. So there we go. There's another version to do this, though, which I'm, I don't use very often. But some people like to stack the bars to make it very obvious. And I'll show you a, there is a reason why you might want to stack the bars. So right now, if you looked at this, does this look more obvious that the orange bar is bigger than the is bigger than the purple bar? Yes. And this is why it's really important when you stack. So stacking is a way. If you stack things, you total things like this. You total it like that. But when you stack, you have another um, opportunity to do something. If I asked you this, how many more Jedi are there than stormtroopers? Hmm. Okay. So you know it's three. But visually speaking. Visually speaking, you could do this, couldn't you? And say that this represents the extra Jedi. So if you're going to redraw it, and you will be doing this at some point with your unitary kind of um, method of ways, if you were to redraw it, I'm drawing the exact same thing, but this time I'm going to go and write down this was 12. This part of the orange bar is also 12, but there happens to be three extra Jedi. It still all totals 27. 
but you can see very easily how you can show things with the unitary method, which is going to be really, really helpful. Let's get another um, example kind of using that idea. Oh, let's just say we're going and we're um, going to eat something. So what should we eat? I don't know. Should we ask, what does the bear like to eat? Here's Math Bear. Math Bear. Math Bear. We haven't seen Math Bear for so long. There's Math Bear. He's like, ooh, I need to put something in my tummy. All right, so what's going to go inside his tummy? Uh, we'll say cookies. I know you're thinking, why didn't you draw a cookie monster? Hmm. Maybe we should. Let's go and say that we have a tray. So there's a tray of 36 cookies. Cool. And um, so 36 cookies. And we're going to say in those cookies you have chocolate and vanilla. <laughs> as I get a as I get a message, which is really exciting. So um, chocolate and vanilla. Okay, so if there were 15, though, we were told they were given there's 15 chocolate cookies. Chocolate, hmm, how many vanilla are there? Hmm, okay, so let's try and just draw this. Now, you probably know the answer. You probably figured this out in your head. But I want to go and draw it. So here, we know that this whole thing, what is this whole thing equal? This whole bar, it equals 36. That's the whole. Remember, this is called the part whole method, isn't it? And it's called that for a reason. This is the whole. 36 is the whole. And we have a part of it. We know that a part of it is 15. Ding. This is 15. But we don't know the rest. Hmm. So how could we go and figure that out? So I'll even kind of redraw this one, because this is, this is important. So if you're going to redraw this properly, is that you would say this whole thing is 36. So if I want to take this little piece of it off, mathematically, what would you do? You would go and you would subtract, wouldn't you? 36 minus 15 to figure that out. Because you're going to take away this piece. You're going to go, boom, take that away. And you're going to figure out what that is. So 36 minus 15, I think that's going to be 21. There are 21 vanilla cookies, which are great because I love vanilla cookies. So let's take a look at another question. And let's say uh, this guy named Luke. Okay, so where's Luke? You might be thinking, hmm, Luke? Luke who? Who could that be in the Star Wars universe? Um, anyways, he paid he paid quite a bit of money. He paid 105 galactic dollars uh, for a pair of uh, shirts and and pants. Okay, that's cool. But he paid $39, but we know that he also he paid exactly, he paid 39 bucks for that shirt. How much was the pants? So how much were the pants? Okay, let's go and just draw this. We'll use green. It's a great color of a lightsaber. Let's say we have green there, and let's say we have, I don't know, let's go blue. Let's go his original color uh, lightsaber like this. Okay, and we got some gray going on there. So you know, all together, these two bars, they were $105, and we know that 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 shirt was $39. Okay, so this is another way that you could go and show that. So just to kind of kind of show you there. And of course the mathematical way of doing this would be 105 and subtracting just 39 like that. So I'm going to go and actually even do my own little math. I'm going to do some borrowing and stuff because you know sometimes this math is pretty hard. So $66. So $66 for that pair of blue pants. Um, so again, you could do 66 like this, but I do want to show you, because the obvious next question would be, is how much more was the pants compared to the shirt? So again, this 39 piece is the same size as this 39 piece. So how much more? If this was 66 in total, how do I get this piece right there? How do I do it? Well, then you'd have to go 66 and take away 39, just like that. You can do some borrowing. We get seven and two, so it's twenty-seven dollars more. So twenty-seven dollars more than the shirt. 
So some different ways to start you off kind of um, looking at what the unitary method looks like using the part whole method. Hope you enjoyed. Look out for part two. Hey all you math Padawans, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about the unitary method. There's going to be a part two, so go and check out all the other videos and search for it if you want to learn more about the unitary method. Until next time, have a great day.